Creation is the first Bible. Think about that. I'm saying a lot here. Creation is the first Bible. Think about what the Bible is for us. A sacred, holy, inspired work of art passed down to us from generations of believers who cultivated a way of living while seeking and searching and listening for the Spirit of the living God. The Bible is a collection of voices, each staring into the great mystery of God and transcribing what they see. The Bible is a telling of a particular history, the Israelite story of the beginning of time and how time comes to an end. The Bible is an inspired, authoritative presence that reminds us its words are written by humans, dictated by the Holy Spirit, and inspired enough that we can return to them even centuries later and still pull truth from its roots. The Bible is a God-breathed, God-inspired, living document that moves us closer to the divine. And so is creation. Creation itself is a sacred, holy, inspired work of art passed down to us from generations of believers who cultivated a way of living while seeking and searching and listening for the spirit of the living God. Creation is full of voices, each staring into the great mystery of God and transcribing what it sees. Creation is a telling of history, and when we dig into it, we see stories of the beginning of time and the signs of how things will come to an end. Creation is an inspired, authoritative presence that reminds us it's been cultivated by humans, infused by the Holy Spirit, inspired enough that we can return to it even centuries later and pull truth from its roots. Creation is a God-breathed, God-inspired, living ecosystem that moves us closer to the divine. You see what I did there? I'm not trying to be cheeky here. I really believe that which we believe is true and authoritative about our Bible is also true and authoritative about creation. Creation is the first expression of God that we receive and it deserves the same attention and even scrutiny and even care and research and shared relationship as we have with the Bible. For the God that we find in Scripture is the same God we find in creation. And like Scripture, creation needs to be cared for, preserved, talked to, and shared with the next generation. It's why we create space in our kids' camps for science, and our theme this month is wonder. We have hundreds of kids and families learning and exploring and wondering about the God of creation and the God of the Bible. And what we're teaching is it's the same God. And the Israelites knew this. That's why they took time to give God praise for creation. And we should too. Our psalm today is a creation psalm. It's one of only five in all of the entire Psalter, Psalm 8. 19, 65, 104, and 148. There aren't many, but all five of them pack a punch. Creation Psalms lift up the collective consciousness of Israel, reminding them to care deeply about the earth, to see the earth as God's gift to humanity. And the same should still be true for us. Up where we used to live in Waynesboro, Virginia, there's something called the Skyline Drive. You may have heard about it. It's a road that follows the Shenandoah National Park, and it starts in Waynesboro. I remember the first time that we drove through. The sun was almost setting. We made it to about the third overlook, and something in our soul compelled us to stop. We got out of the car, stood along a rock wall, and we stared in silence, watching the sunset. The beauty at that moment was as close as any of us get to hearing the audible words of God. It was a gift. And our soul needs moments like these. Moments with us out in nature, experiencing tranquility, pausing as we contemplate the awesome beauty of it all. Our soul needs it so we can then take that moment, harness it, breathe it into our soul, and then offer thanks to God for it. The beach does this too, by the way. 
I can stand with my toes in the sand and stare into the vastness of the ocean. And the rhythm of the waves, it feels like God is breathing with me. It causes me to pause and to take something from beyond me into me, and it calms my soul. The Israelites paused their busy schedules and days to do this too, and we should too. There's a reason why doctors tell us to exercise regularly or to get fresh air. There's a reason why we go to the lake or to the beach for vacation. There's a reason why Jane leads retreats to the mountains and the beach. God's Spirit calls to us through creation. We're connected to the deepest parts of ourselves with the deepest parts of the world. We connect to the Spirit of the living God when we engage creation. And King David knew this. As a boy, he was a lowly shepherd. He spent his days and nights caring for God's earth. He had eyes to see the handiwork of God in ways that other people just overlooked. Think about the long afternoons in the hot sun or the cold mornings watching the sun rise. As a child, David developed the ability to see beyond his understanding. And he learned the value of praising God for what he was seeing. And we can too. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 8. It's a creation psalm. And like the other four creation psalms, it calls us to honor the sacredness of the earth. Verse 1. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. In verses 3 and 4. When I look at your heavens, the work, of your fingers, the moon, and the stars that you have established? What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortal that you care for them? I love these lines. I resonate with them in so many ways. I mean, it's like King David is saying, when I look at the heavens, God, when I stare at the moon, when I contemplate my mortality, when I think about the vastness of the universe, all in which you have established, I can't help but ask, who am I? What are we human beings that you're even mindful of us? Like the other creation psalms, this particular one praises God as the creator of life and shows that we should too. But there's something special about Psalm 8. It also zeroes in on God's handiwork with the creation of humans. In verses 5 through 8. Yet you have made them, humans, a little lower than God, crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. In other words, God, You've made the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the earth and the seas, and even the animals, and have placed us humans to have dominion over all these things. You've made all of that, but then you made us, and you made us special. In the Eastern Orthodox tradition, in the Christian tradition, there's a philosophical idea that we don't think too much about in the West. They see creation as Christ. Christ is the embodiment of all things marked with the divine. In essence, they're saying that creation is God-like. Now, stay with me. I don't want mean for this to be weird at all. It's actually extremely fascinating. Us in the West, we dismiss ideas like this just too quickly because we're used to labeling Jesus as the Christ. And Eastern Orthodox would completely agree, Jesus is the Christ. But Christ incorporates more than just the human Jesus. Christ is beyond human. Christ is what was before there were humans and even time or things. Christ existed with God before creation. When you read Genesis 1.26, it's the story of creation and scripture says this, Let us make humans in our image. I love this verse because it begs the question, 
Who's us? Eastern Orthodox would say it's God and Christ together. So when God breathed life into Genesis 1, the earth became infused with Christ. And when Jesus was born, Jesus became the embodiment, the flesh and blood of that Christ. Jesus is the physical manifestation of the Christ. Here's why all this matters. For the Eastern Church, all of creation is therefore sacred. The bugs and kittens, the mountains and oceans, they all carry a piece of the divine in them, meaning all of creation embodies a piece of God, including us, humans. Not only was Jesus the embodiment of the divine, but in some ways, a lower way, we are too. I mean, that's what verse 5 says in Psalm 8. You have made humans a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. In other words, humans embody and point others to and then reflect the divine. In a 2012 interview, a famous astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, was asked about what the most astonishing thing in space was to him. If you know him, he's very cheeky, he has great answers, and it didn't take long to respond. This was his quote. The knowledge that the atoms that comprise life on earth, the atoms that make up the human body, are also traceable to the crucibles that cooked light elements into heavy elements at extreme temperatures and created the same compositional elements found in the stars. When I look at the night sky... I know we are a part of this universe. We are in this universe. But more importantly, the universe is in us. We're told Tyson is an astrophysicist, but he sure sounds like the psalmist here to me. What both scripture and Tyson and creation are saying to us is, Christ is in us. If this is true, which I 100% believe it is, then what does this mean? It means a lot. It means King David may have been a genius. David knew God made us special. God made us with the same materials as the stars by putting pieces of the divine in us. And God is now asking us to care for it, love it, offer praise back to God because of it. It also means that this life in this earth is a gift. It was offered to us by God, and we must cherish it. We must care for all of creation and for one another. And your soul longs for you to start living in this way. So this week, go out into creation. Get your hands in the sand. Feel the sun on your face. Go on a walk. Go to the beach. Let your soul connect to the divine things of this life. It matters. King David knew it matters. And deep down in your soul, you know it does too. And when you go, I hope you will pray this from verse 9. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our creator, how majestic is your name in all the earth.